My name is Neil Malik from NAC Training and today on Everyday Office we're going to talk about Office 365 groups. Now you may have come into contact with this idea of an Office 365 group. You may have heard the term thrown around and you may also already know about things like distribution lists, uh, SharePoint groups, things like that. So what I'm going to do in this video is describe what an Office 365 group actually is, how you make one, and the benefits that you get from it. As you can see, I'm here in the Office 365 Admin Center for my own site. And if I look over here on the left-hand side on the uh, Groups entry on the left, I can go into Groups. And from there, you'll see that when I go to add a group, it actually asks me the question, what kind of group are you talking about? Are you talking about an Office 365 group? Obviously what we're talking about here. Uh, security group, distribution list, or a mail enabled security group. So as you can see, it starts to tell you over there on the side, the differences between these things. I think most end users are familiar with this distribution list idea, where if you have a team internally at the organization, you can put the different people who are on the team on the same distribution list, and then people can just email something like uh, IT support or something like that, and then the five people who are on the distribution list for IT support might be the one who responds to that email. For those of you on the back end of things, you probably run into the security group idea, being able to, in Active Directory, create a group of people and say, these people are administrators, these people are IT supervisors, these people are HR, you know, things like that where they say, okay, if these people are HR, if everybody in the security group is HR, that means that everybody in the security group is allowed to do something in SharePoint or allowed to do something in OneDrive, etc. But Office 365 groups are a little bit different. The idea behind the Office 365 group is that if you have a group of people internally at the company, they probably need to really work together more than just a distribution list would give you. And so when you create an Office 365 group, you get the following things. You get a group email address, just like a distribution list. You also get a group calendar. You also get a group SharePoint site. You also get a group OneNote. So you can see that these things, they start adding up. There's a lot of different things on the list. I'll put a link down in the description to a site from Microsoft that tells you all the things you get when you create one Office 365 group. So the idea with the Office 365 group is why have five or 10 or 15 individual things that you can do for your team to help them work together when you could just make them an Office 365 group like this, give them a name, Maybe something like uh, human resources. Then you can give them an email address. You see right there, human resources at craftsoft.xyz. You can give it a little bit of a description if that's useful to you. And uh, public versus private, as you can see here, only those people who are part of the HR group can see into the HR SharePoint site. Uh, so that might be a reason to go private with it. Then scroll down, notice here it says, send copies of group conversations and events to group members inboxes. Now this is kind of an interesting idea. If this were a normal distribution list, you would say, of course, always send all messages to human resources at craftsoft.xyz uh, to every member of the group. But you could also do it in a different way. You could say that people are allowed to see the inbox that they're sharing with everybody else, and they're allowed to subscribe to it. So by leaving this set to off, you'll see that the members of the group need to go into a special place to see the messages that are sent to human resources at craftsoft.xyz, or they could subscribe. Notice here, group members can unsubscribe themselves, if they like, by selecting the unsubscribed link in group emails. Or, again, you can turn it on and then um, have those people automatically receive it to their inbox. And then lastly, under owner, I'll just go ahead and put in my own information as the owner. 
course and hit add. So this is one way of creating a group in Office 365 through the Office 365 admin portal. The other way though is I could actually go directly into Microsoft Outlook. As you can see in my Microsoft Outlook over here on the left, I have different groups listed already. And in fact, on the home ribbon at the top of the screen, I have this new group entry over on the far right. I think you have to have Office 2016 to get this, and you have to be on the Office 365 uh, subscription, obviously, to be able to get the Office 365 setup. So you click on new group here. As you can see, I can give it a name like uh, information technology. And in the exact same way that human resources became human resources at craftsoft.xyz, I can see that same thing happening here through Outlook. And again, I can choose between a public group and a private group. And I can choose whether to subscribe everybody so that their, the group conversations always go to their inbox. Otherwise, they have to go to the group inbox to see this. So again, I'm going to leave this unchecked. I'm not going to automatically subscribe people so you can see the difference here. Click OK. And uh, just like that, through Outlook and through our Office uh, portal, we were able to create Office 365 groups. Looking good there. And let me go back to Outlook. As you can see here, I'm automatically an admin on that Office 365 group. I'll go ahead and add Steve to the group. Looking good. And click OK. And this will generate this group for me. And as you can see, if I'm doing it through Outlook, it automatically places the information technology group over here on the left. Notice that if I'm selected on the information technology group on the left, I'm not selected on my inbox, which is back up this way. Again, this is the information technology inbox. Their public group. Notice that I'm looking at conversations, but I could also go over here to the calendar. Remember, there's a shared calendar now for everybody in information technology. I can also, within that group, go over to files. And in files, you'll see that this is a uh, group area within the SharePoint site. There we go where we can share documents with one another. You can see here that Neil and Steve are both members of the SharePoint site, just like so. And we have a shared notebook as well. Now, remember what I said a moment ago. Um, if you want to see the messages that are going to the information technology address in your own inbox, you can subscribe to that. So let's see the difference here. Let's say the Neil Malik account sends an email to the information technology account. So I'll write a new email. I'll write that email to information technology at craftsoft.xyz. Test, test, and send it off. Now, because I'm a member of the information technology Office 365 group, you might imagine that that would show up in my inbox, but it doesn't. Instead, I go over here to groups, click on information technology, and as soon as that message populates into the conversations, and so now this shared mailbox has that test email in it, and you can see that my actual inbox over here on the left does not. And I would change that by going back to the information technology shared mailbox, go up here to membership, and as you can see, subscribe is my option. And that just says that uh, any group conversations go to your inbox instead of having to go over to the secondary mailbox here. And while we're here, you notice there's the, also the opportunity for us to add members, to edit things about how the group works. And of course, you could do the same thing if you were in the, um, admin center here by going to the human resources group or by going to the information technology group you could then go in change who the members are uh, and different settings about this group so those are some of the benefits of creating an office 365 group and how you do it good luck